got drunk with Chris Plummer, didn't you? A couple of times. But early, didn't you? How, when was the first time you got drunk with him? Chris, uh, Chris is one of the world champions of drink, drinking. And, <laughs> but, but he writes about it himself in his own uh, biographies. And I got to see some first-class drinkers. It's funny, because Chris and I did a play together in New York. A whole bunch of kids in the play, young people. We come out one night, now Chris, of course, is going to go home with Elaine, have a glass of wine, and go to bed. And I'm, I'm not going to do anything, too, because I'm too old. But one thing Chris says to me, he says, look at these kids. He says, they're all going to some gym someplace to work out. He says, remember what we used to do back in the old days? I mean, we would have been blasted half an hour after the curtain went down. <laughs> and it's true. I mean, in those days, it did seem to be a lot more fun. I mean, we were a lot crazier. No, people weren't as worried about... Uh, you know, the, uh, the fact that you had to climb back in there Wednesday afternoon, Tuesday nights were as bad as any other night. I wonder if we, if, if it's partly because the generation of kids um, learned, because we ended up reading about that whole generation either died or went into rehab and everybody's sure. an alcoholic and maybe if you went, we can't do that every night. Well, we went, we all went through it too. I mean, we went through Belushi and we went through John Candy and, uh, and, and Chris Farley and, you know, I, I, I knew all those guys, Sam, Sam Kinison, who was an extraordinary genius, a brilliant, brilliant Comic. guy, yeah. and extremely self-destructive, uh, who had cleaned himself up, you know. I mean, it was amazing. Here's Sam driving back from Vegas, and uh, some guy who was drunk comes across the divider and, and he'll, hits him in the head on collision and kills him. Talk about irony. But, uh, what about you? What was your experience of that like? You know, it's funny. This is a true story. And... Uh, uh, I had a second family. I mean, I was always a kind of a sneaky drinker. I, you know, if I was on location or in a hotel someplace, maybe I get every once in a while I get blasted at home. But one, I was at Thanksgiving uh, years ago, ten years ago, twelve years ago, and my son Cormac, who is now a, a, a freshman at Syracuse, and whom I love beyond measurement, and. Uh, uh, it was Thanksgiving, and I, it was 11 o'clock, and we had a whole bunch of people there, and I was having a glass of wine. I was fine. I wasn't, I wasn't even high at that point. But as I'm looking around the room, my eyes catch his eyes, his eight-year-old eyes, and he was looking at me with that look, and that look said, what's he going to do today? How, 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 how bad will it get today? How far will he go today? I knew it immediately. And I remember putting the glass down, not, not from that, you know, I'll have a couple of glasses of wine now. But that was the end of that part of my life. Because when I looked at that kid, I said, I'm not going to subject him to this stuff. So it stopped. And, uh, and that's one good thing I'd say about it. All you need to do is have one kid look at you, the kid that you love, and say, please don't do this. And uh, that was enough for me.